not be comfortable in providing the abortion. But Shailaja Chandra, as someone who's been such a senior bureaucrat, I want the perspective of what has been the hesitation because in many ways proposed amendments keep gathering dust in government files. Uh, in Unlike in America, we don't really have uh, a, you know, a strong religious movement. We do have Fa Father Savri Mutu here, but with respect to him, the reason that our abortion laws have, have not changed is not because there's a strong anti-religious movement. What is the thinking that stops th these laws from changing? Well, I think a very progressive bill was brought in 2017. It was never tabled. Mm -hmm. It was um, deflected because I think there was a minute right from we, the report says from the Prime Minister's office saying that they must look at both, which is the PCPD, PNDT Act and the uh, abortion law, which they were seeking to amend. The amendment was progressive. It had gone through a lot of, uh, I would say, iterations and all that. And the upshot was that you can take it up to 24 weeks from 20 and a few other amendments. Yeah. Now, going back into PCP NDT, it is linked. You have to tell our viewers what the... Well, okay. Please do not use specialized acronyms. The, the PCP and DT stands for the, um, you'll have to put it, yes? Preconception, prenatal diagnosis. Yes. Yes. So basically, can I simplify it to say that there's a kind of conflation with sex selection that goes on here? Yes, yes, I'm just yes. using common Absolutely. person's jargon yeah. so that we understand yeah. what you're saying. You're right, but yeah. it's a law. Now, that law has been pursued tooth and nail all over the country yeah. on the ground that you will not do sex selection. Mm -hmm. no, no radiologist can do it, no sonography yeah. clinic can do it, and, yeah. we, and parents are completely dissuaded from doing it. That <sighs> issue has got conflated with the issue of abortion. It needs to be segregated. The two things are separate. They have, however, a little bit of a confluence because of the reason that people will want to use the abortion law to be able to get rid of that third child if they don't want the third child. I'm saying you have to compartmentalize it. My point would be, number one, doing anything which is like wanting an abortion is the decision of a mother. She has an unwanted pregnancy. She doesn't want that pregnancy. She should have the right to. But what you're it. saying is, one, the conflation with this very stringent sex selection uh, uh, laws that we all support, by yes. the way, yes. uh, is, is something that has clouded the abortion yes. debate yes. and prevented a kind of a review of the laws, yes. one. Two, you are arguing, if I've understood you right, that abortion is not a substitute for contraception. Yes, it is not. But if there has been a failure of contraception, you have to have this option of going in for abortion. Oh, and the other law, the sex selection clouding the abortion debate, do you think that's reasonable? Lalita say you can't wish it away. You can't yeah. wish away that dimension. You know, you'll have to put it into compartments. Exactly. It's more than possible to look at every envelope separately. Yeah, that's not it. allow the big uh, picture to cloud these issues. Mm -hmm. They're very important. They have to be confronted. And if uh, the policymakers want, they can look at each thing. But Ashanti is... I would say it is an individual choice. Yeah. It cannot be thrust on an individual if they're not prepared for it. It is better not to have the child than to bring up a neglected child. And that can happen if you are not accepting the fact that this child deserves to be living. Mm -hmm. That's a very, very strong argument she has made, but it cannot apply to a society. It can apply to individuals. That choice still remains. But, but her argument is that once you have this kind of sanction for it, everybody will tend to make that choice than any other choice. You have to look at the larger we need to look at here. You have to look at the larger picture. Oh, so Shelja, you want to come in there? I want yeah. to come in because you raised first the issue of a 13-year-old. That's yes. what you said. This, the 13-year-old having sex, boys and girls. Yes. Let us address that. Yes. I think that this sexuality beginning early and the fact that they can, a girl can get pregnant willingly. I mean, she's not, she well, doesn't know it. Well, willingly, you can't make an she informed choice at 13, She goes and gets 14, pregnant. Yeah. If that happens and she is sort of talked to by her parents or by anybody in society and she wants to get rid of that religious sentiments apart, if she wants to do it, it has to be facilitated. That's the right. law must recognize it. It's a reality which is happening and she should not change her entire life because of that incident. But I would go one step further that the parents who, the, under the law, she's a minor, Yes. She'll have to be, uh, the consent of the parent would be there. The parent should then be within, there should be a law by which that particular individual who did it, is who, who got her pregnant, is also under a certain kind of a societal, legal compulsion 
to pay the price as a juvenile. But well, here's the gray area, and I want to just throw it out. Mm. What, 13, yes, 14, yes, 15, yes. If a 17-year-old, if two 17-year-old children or young adults have sex, girl gets pregnant, goes to a doctor, the doctor has to report it to the police. It is also considered statutory rape or non-consensual sex at 17. So do we need to revise this number? I'm just throwing this out there. There are a lot of young people here. Would you bring the age down? Shall I, do? I would not. You would I not? Would not why, no. why not? I would not because children at that age are not really, their mind is not developed enough. They're doing things purely out of a physical urge. They're not thinking. Uh, okay, I've okay, shall I do a quick response? I'm going into troubled waters, but yeah. a <laughs> lot of what is happening is also happening in the family. We're not thinking yes. of larger India where fathers, brothers, uncles, brothers-in-law are doing all this to a young girl. No, no, yes. yes. So, we're, we're, that is so the law exists to protect yes. young girls from sexual assault. And such cases, I agree with that. Parents, and child sexual abuse. And we cannot trivialize we that. We cannot. I agree and with that. And the parents should be will, willing and should be now encouraged. Go and report it to the police. And no gynecologist should say no. They should be protected to do the abortion if there is an FIR. If there is an FIR, just go ahead and do it. And FIR, you want that FIR. That a rape is something which is a rape, it is as bad as murder when it comes to a young girl. And it has to be investigated. I'm not talking about youngsters. That couple, So we need to grade this Sena, law. Yeah. But Shailaja, one thing you'd like to see change in terms of the law. One or maybe two. I would two. like to see the amendment which the government had brought in 2017 becoming law. Yeah. That itself would be a very big thing. Second, I think a Rajya Sabha committee had thrown out the idea of having sex education in schools in an organized way. It was going on because of HIV AIDS. Yeah. Yes. That chapter was over. It has never been revived. I think another committee needs to set up to accept that you do need sex education.